everybody, and welcome. After all that turbulent news around Kerbal Space Program 2 studio shutting down and the future of the game in balance, I thought I might uh, do a little bit of a palate cleanser and just do a regular old Kerbal mission in the game. And for this I chose to replicate what I talked about a few weeks back, the Buran the Soviet space shuttle that almost was, but then kind of wasn't. Almost a little bit like the promise for Kerbal Space Program 2. Well, that's yet to be seen. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I did two videos around the news surrounding the studio for Kerbal Space Program 2. You can watch those by clicking on the link up top or in the description. And also, stay subscribed if you want to find out more, because I'm staying on that news topic. Don't you worry about that. But over here we're trying out the glider variant, the atmospheric test vehicle for the Buran and well, the real Buran did 25 successful atmospheric test flights and mine <laughs> just weren't successful at all. Anyway, since this is a space program and not a glider program, I decided to just skip the atmospheric tests and go for the rocket launch. And here we have my recreation of the Buran Energia vehicle combination. As you might have known already in the past, the Energia was the carrier rocket for the Buran shuttle. And it was quite capable. It was capable of sending up to 100 tons into low Earth orbit. At least if the payload had the capacity to do the orbital insertion itself. Curious thing was it uh, required the payload to be mounted on the side because there was no fairing on the top. Well, that was all fine and dandy for a, uh, for a shuttle copy, which the Buran obviously was. And the big, uh, the big difference, of course, to the real space shuttle, well, real, both were real, but uh, for the American Space Shuttle is that the booster main core also had four engines. They were called the RD-0120 engines and they ran on hydrogen and liquid oxygen. And now we have reached space. We're still in the atmosphere heating up a little bit, but we're now leaving the atmosphere and continuing on our orbital maneuvering system power. Yeah. The Buran was very similar to the Space Shuttle, but also very different. I talk about that in my previous video. For instance, it had the capability of doing fully autonomous flight. And yeah, that was something that was, I think, built into the US Space Shuttle a little bit, but not really used. Uh, anyway, uh, my information on that is a little bit fuzzy, to be honest. But getting this into orbit was a lot easier than I honestly expected. I did not have to use quite a few iterations uh, for this as I feared. So yeah, despite all its flaws, Kerbal Space Program still provided me with the tools to make a capable vehicle, at least to get this into orbit. Let's see how it handles when it, we try to get it back down. The two vacuum engines using monopropellant fuel are firing uh, to keep us out of the atmosphere first. Well, we want to have a stable orbit, right? Don't we? The real Buran only flew once to space, unfortunately. A couple more were built than the original prototype, but uh, unfortunately due to the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, that uh, remained the only flight. And what it also didn't do is what I'm doing here, delivering a payload to orbit, or at least none that we know of. Uh, here we have a, I think, 32 ton tank. I always forget uh, which one is which. We delivered that to orbit and nobody can use it because there's no <laughs> docking port or anything on it. So it's basically just space junk. And here we're boinking it away. Yeah. Please don't try that with your million dollar spacecraft, for real. Okay, now that we have completed the space part of this space mission, let's get it back down to the surface. And yeah, unlike the real flight of the Buran, this one is actually crewed. We have Valentina Kerman on the helm because, yeah, honestly, I forgot to include a probe core. <laughs> 
<laughs> so unlike the real Buran, my Buran is not capable of autonomous flight. Yeah, go figure. Anyway, what I usually try to do ever since Corporal Space Program 1 actually, is to aim the periapsis at about 20 to 30 kilometers and have it somewhere east of Kerbal Space Center that usually gets me into the ballpark close to uh, the, the runway. But yeah, let's see what happens here. First, we can witness this beautiful sunrise. Yeah. I mean, there are, of course, the visual mods for KSP-1, but for my tastes, this is still prettier. And it would be a shame if that game was actually going to be discontinued, as some people fear, because of the whole studio situation going on at the moment. And it's doubly so a shame that they fired, which is confirmed, they fired Blackrack, the former KSP, or now actually again KSP-1 modder who did Scatterer and is maintaining the environmental visual enhancement mods and doing volumetric clouds and whatever. So he really did a great job on KSP-2 improving the atmospheric graphics and it really shows compared to every version before he did his magic and I think the first iteration of that was already seen in version 0.15 this here is version point two one, so there have been some improvements since then already. And we also of course have our atmospheric heating, our thermal systems in place in the game that show us that we're now actually re-entering and heating up our parts all over the place. Since this is a low orbit that we're returning from, the heating effects are not as pronounced and we're going to be fine. There's nothing going to explode yet. But unfortunately, I'm going to overshoot the space center, at least from this trajectory. So what I'm trying here is to maybe uh, wiggle the spacecraft a little bit more into the wind, as you will, to increase wind resistance or air resistance and therefore slowing it down a lot harder so we might actually get to the runway or at least a runway but as you can see we're still way too fast and way too high for that at this point in time we already should be at something about 15 kilometers height and a lot slower so yeah that's not going to happen, but if we can slow down a little bit more, we might be able to land on the reserve runway on that island to the east of the main space center. Let's try that. And yeah, this is the Kerbal way. Attempt, try, fail, try again. Or if you don't want to try again, try to adapt and do something different. I'm really curious what the developers that are still working on KSP2 despite the announced layoffs are having to adapt to to get some update out there or a few updates out there. I don't know, but you will see. What you've also seen if you are a Patreon subs uh, if you are a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member is this video earlier than everyone else because that's what I offer on my Patreon and for YouTube members and for those on higher tiers, your name will be shown here, like all these wonderful fine folks that believe in what I do and continue to support my channel. Thank you so much for support, I really really appreciate it and I hope many more will join soon. What we're also trying to join here is that runway on top, but we're coming in way too fast and too steep. So yeah, I'm trying to pitch that up, but yeah, let's hope KSP2 itself doesn't end this way. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.